Hello everyone, Mr. Hendo here. I wanted to make a quick video showcasing another heater problem that I encountered. So I made a video about a year ago and uh, it's pretty popular. It was replacing the transformer on the heater. So uh, this is a different separate problem that could cause you to not have heat and potentially pay hundreds of dollars in HVAC repair if you don't understand how the system works and how to diagnose problems. I had this problem about a week ago and uh, figured it out pretty easily only using a volt checker. Now this is just a simple uh, double, triple A checker you can buy. I'll post a link in the description but uh, you can use a, multi, uh, a multimeter if you want. However, I find uh, that this one is easier so I'm going to walk you through step by step how to diagnose the problem and fix it. But uh, let's get started. I've already done, I've already completed this repair. I'm just going to walk you through it because uh, I feel that uh, some of you should know how to do this, especially if you're trying to YouTube uh, repairs. So first you want to look at your machine. Here's mine here. It's a carrier model. So you want to turn it off first. I've already done that, but I'll show you the switch. Don't mind my uh, my makeshift drain tube that's in the way here. Okay, so there's the off switch. So it is in the off position. Okay, now that you have the panel open, I'm going to show you what happened with mine. And uh, you could try to figure out if that's happening to yours. So here's the part of the system we're going to talk about in its entirety. It's pretty much all the hardware components and you have to understand that all each of these components sends a signal to the circuit board and the circuit board decides if the actual complete system is ready to fire up. So if you're having a problem you can take your voltmeter and trace these wires and determine where the signal stops and you should be able to find from that which component is bad or is telling you that the system needs to be fixed there or you know replaced in this instance it turned out that the thermal limit switch was the bad component in this circuit using the voltmeter I was able to determine that I also found that the flame sensor needed to be clean not replaced just uh, cleaned now you may notice that there's some corrosion at the bottom there by the flame sensor and that could be what caused the flame sensor to be dirty this is the location of the thermal limit switch that I needed to replace and this is the location of the flame sensor. As you can see the thermal limit switch just had two screws that needed to be taken off and the flame sensor I think only had one. This is the underside view of the flame sensor with the screw you're going to have to take out. This is the flame sensor once it's removed and again you just get some a scouring pad and just clean it off. Here is the uh, thermal overload switch. The uh, camera's reversed. I don't know why I did that. But the voltmeter, see those two wires that are coming off? All you need to do is with the system on, check to see which one has voltage. They should both have voltage if it's working correctly. If only one has voltage, that means the contact switch inside the component is not made up, telling you that you've either had a thermal overload or the switch is bad. Okay, there you have it. So that's how I determined that my thermal overload switch needed to be replaced. Turns out that the flame sensor was dirty and uh, simply cleaned it off with some steel wool. And then uh, I had to get a new thermal overload switch, which, the, which was available online. I got it on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description below. And uh, I went to the to a local plumbing heating repair shop. They had one um, similar. However, it was you know the price was obviously marked up because you know they need to make some money so uh, I did buy one there as a temporary replacement once the one that I ordered online which was the correct model number for my unit arrived in the mail I installed it and uh, started right up okay so all you're gonna need is a wrench or uh, a set like this that has all the different uh, size sockets and um, a voltmeter 
Okay, so those are the tools you're going to need to uh, easily go through the system, find out where the contact is not connected and the power is stopping uh, and or signal is stopping to get to the board that's preventing it from firing up, so to speak. So thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe, like, turn on notification for the videos, and uh, I'll have another one coming up shortly.